Hello, I'm Dr. Anna Dale, and our text for today is Chapter 17 of Darwin and the Darwinian Revolution by Gertrude Himmelfarb. The chapter title is The Origin of Man, and it is about 25 pages long. This chapter begins with Himmelfarb noting that the debate following the publication of Origin of Species turned toward human evolution, and this was the subject of Darwin's 1871 book, The Descent of Man. Himmelfarb devotes a good deal of this chapter to the argument of this book and criticisms of it, reactions to it. Um, she notes that the book was more talked about than read among common people, and that journalistic reactions were varied, but in general less vehement than might be expected, given the reaction to the origin. Many of the reactions focused on the question of religion and Darwinism's implications for it. She spends some pages talking about the fierce criticism directed at dissent by St. George Mivart, a Catholic critic, and Huxley's polemical response to Mivart. She notes that there has been a change in public opinion over the decades since the origin appeared. There was a much more positive and genial reception to the dissent of man. Himmelfarb's own view, expressed in this chapter, is that dissent is poorly argued and is a much weaker book than the origin. She calls it far less rigorous in argument and more relaxed in tone. She notes that in this book, Darwin assigns a greater role for sexual selection rather than natural selection in explaining human origins and development, and notes his turn towards Lamarckian ideas. She calls his explanations in this book contrived and hypothetical. She notes that the key to dissent is that the insight that the difference between animals and humans are differences of degree, not differences of kind. This is the crucial fact that Darwin needs to prove, although she says he, instead of constructing a careful case for the mechanism of these changes in the nature of these differences, instead Darwin offers us only catalogs of examples. She notes Darwin's contention with Mill, John Stuart Mill, on the origin of man's moral sense, and comes to the conclusion generally that Darwin is a poor philosopher, badly prepared, and with all the prejudices of his class and his profession, Darwin seems to have thought that with a fairly uh, shallow, light reading, he would be able to enter into uh, substantive debate on philosophical questions with a long pedigree. Uh, Himmelfarb also notes, critically, that Darwin tends to resolve the issue of religion at the lowest level possible, and she paints a portrait of him as relatively shallow and unsympathetic, and a poor observer of humanity. She writes, Darwin's failures of logic and crudities of imagination emphasized the inherent faults of his theory. And she goes on, she continues in this chapter her criticism of his theory. She notes the problems of the rapid development of the human brain and the seeming return of teleology in the writings of some of Darwin's allies. She ends the chapter with a discussion of the Piltdown hoax, which you should certainly read more about. Just search online for Piltdown. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.